Satnam, my name is Wa. And my name is Gurumukh. And in this talk, we're going to share the philosophy in the Khalsa way, why we do what we do, some of the meaning behind the methods. We hope you enjoy. Welcome. Um, we're in a really special moment right now. This is my mom. I'm sitting here with the, the creator, the founder, the, the birther of the Calsa Way and the Calsa Way method. And I am seven months pregnant with my first. So, Mama, I think the best way to start this is you share the birth story of how Calsa Way came to be. 35 years ago, when you were in my womb, and came out so nicely and so quickly. And at home, many friends came and said, how did you do it? You're 42 years old and the baby came easy and blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, I don't know what I did, but let's sit in my living room if you're pregnant and I'll tell you what I did. I'll share what I did. And that's how it got birthed. And to this day, it just keeps growing and growing. And what does it have to do with Kundalini Yoga and the relationship um, between the Khalsa Way and Kundalini Yoga since you are um, predominantly a Kundalini Yoga teacher? Right. Well, it was many, many years ago when I was asked to do a video in the 90s, I believe. And I went to our teacher, Yogi Bhajan, and I said, Sir, what should I do? I I'm making this up. Is it legitimate? And he just laughed at me. And he says, you know everything. Get out of here. So it was like he gifted me with this ancient knowledge of how to help women bring their babies into the world with more strength, more intuition, and more knowingness that they knew what they were doing. Because we were in a time, and it still is this time, when sometimes we give our power over to the doctor, like they know more than you do. But that's, it's not their baby, it's your baby, and your baby will give you totally the instructions of how this child needs to come out. Yeah, I think that for me, the experience of growing up with the Khalsa Way and um, being that first child in utero who uh, it was really developed out of, out of your pregnancy with me, and then teaching it for many years before conceiving my own child and just seeing how it was relevant 35 years ago for your pregnancy, but it's still deeply relevant and even more so now, almost 35 years later. Um, we live in this world where uh, pregnancy is safer than it's ever been in the past, but it's also tied up in so much fear because of the age of information, because everyone can Google everything. You feel one symptom and you start figuring it out, being your own doctor, or you run to the doctor and you're just hypersensitive in pregnancy. And so it's this time where we have to have tools, otherwise the anxieties can be overwhelming, um, the, the, the sense of change can be totally overtaken by fear, um, the development and the release and the letting go, especially as women, of your body and accepting the, the new shape and the new form that it's taking. And so much of the calls away really taps on the mind, the body, and the spirit. So it's not just limited to the linear physical body of how do I relate to my body and keep it healthy and fit and strong, but how do I relate to my spirit? How do I tap into the strength of my soul? How do I use my breath? How do I discipline my mind to be more meditative so that when those thoughts of fear and those thoughts of anxiety come up, I have tools to, to soothe them, to calm them. And I think you so beautifully through all the practices that took you to 42 years of age by the time you conceived me was what burst the calls away organically within you. But not everyone has the history that you had to be able to like birth a organic technology that will help carry them through pregnancy. And thank God you were able to kind of document it along the way and train women all over the world to be able to teach this. And, um, and so even though it was your personal practice is really how it started, it, 
is so potent and so relevant and so powerful 35 years later. And I'm utilizing it more than maybe I even knew I would in my pregnancy. And I think I feel very lucky because it's like in my DNA. It's kind of my go-to. It's very organic for me. But this is an exciting moment to be able to birth it into a bigger audience with more women having access to these really powerful tools. Well, I think, well, for me, because I'd waited 20 years for you to come. And to me, I just lived in the middle of a miracle. I lived in the miracle of wonder and amazement. It, it was just, I don't know if that happens to a lot of women. They get pregnant or they try this, that. They're working, they have careers, they're busy. They're adding something else to their lives, which is having a baby. And we try to bring that to the centerfold. The most important thing a mama, a woman, when she is pregnant, is to do this in nine months right. And a lot of women don't know what that right is. They don't know what that celebration, that miracle is. And when they sit down on their mat and they do cults away, which means the pure ones, they're reminded of the miracle. Yeah. And, and that gives you courage. That gives you strength. That gives you the connection with the source where we all came from. And that's why cults away is so important in this busy, 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 busy world. Yeah. I think it'd be nice. I mean, Close Away has so many facets, right? Like we said, you, you go into mind, body, and spirit in the practice, in the meditations, in the breath. But I think there are definitely some founding principles of what we're really trying to get at in this practice and what each class in this series is trying to kind of invoke and awaken. Um, what would you say is like the first principle of, of, of our practice and why we do what we do? I think the first principle is plugging in to your own power, to your own intuition, and if I might say, your own self-love. Because you can only love this little soul, big soul in the body, as much as you love yourself. And loving yourself is like total acceptance of everything, including your relationship with your own mother. And there's a big component of forgiveness that comes, appreciation that comes, gratitude that comes, and your relationship with the source whatever you call that source to be. Yeah, I feel that. I feel like so much of your mom stuff comes up. And even though we have like the most <laughs> amazing, loving relationship, we still, still could get a little. We're yeah. still mother and daughter. It's like we don't, we don't need to you know, portray that we're just these perfect yogis that are divinely in love and aligned all the time. It's mother and daughter. And I think going through my pregnancy, and I'm sure even more so into birth, um, stuff comes up and it's an opportunity to either hold grudges or cling on and try to resist, or it's opportunity to soften the grip and heal so that you don't continue the pattern, so you don't continue to pass on wounds that maybe even your mother got from her mother and it's yeah. just passed down. It's opportunity to heal legacy and generations, not just your and own To self. start a whole new human race, really. Yeah. And that's why we do the particular meditations, to help us to let go. And even with our fathers, too. Yeah. Because we have healing to do so we don't keep the same patterning. Also, we have a lot of fun, and we dance a lot, and we move a lot, and it's got lots of different postures, lots of different variations, not just same, 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 same. And that's the beauty of all the classes, because we kind of choreograph them as we go along. I would say a big part of it is also like the creativity. When you're in your pregnancy, you're in the most like creative seat of the universe. You're creating another human life. And 
So activating that creativity through the practice and through dance and through the movements which have a lot of freedom and aren't necessarily as structured as a uh, as, as a, a straight asana, as a yeah. straight asana, um, allows a woman to tap into that and allows her to to utilize that creative force because it takes creativity to birth a baby through the birth canal. It takes creativity to be a mom. You're constantly, you know, troubleshooting, changing directions, changing plans because you have to adapt to this little tiny human who you don't know how they're going to be until they come out. Um, but I want to oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want to talk about um, the. The second principle of, you know, what what is the biggest gift, I want to say, that um, a woman can give herself in pregnancy? I think one of the biggest gifts is to develop her intuition. We're 16 times more intuitive than men. That's why we are the ones that have the babies. We are also more patient. That's why we can nurse. That's why we can hold. That's why we get up in the middle of the night. That patience comes when we plug into that knowingness that's always there. But so much of our life we've been so busy, 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 busy in the world that we haven't stopped to plug in because we know everything. And we know how to bring this baby out. We know how to hold this baby. We know how to go through the hard times. We know how to go through the contractions. We, even when the voice gets so big and says, you can't do it, just get an epidural, just call it a game, quits and all that, there's something stronger that says, you can do it. And that's what we plug into in the classes by what we call our keep up exercises to build that inner confidence, that intuitive self, that power, which we'll go into soon. Yeah. I think that the, the intuition piece is so vital and so important because um, really such a big part of the Calls Away is empowering you to know that you know your baby and you know your body better than anybody else. And yes, there's going to be external circumstances that sometimes are beyond our control, but if we are tuned into our intuition, then we can move through any circumstance, whether it be intervention that's required or going off of birth plan because it's necessary. We can go through it with grace. We can go through it with trust because we're tuned into ourself and we never feel like somebody else is holding the reins of our life. Someone else is holding the reins of our birth or our parenthood. But we're consciously making choices to adapt, to shift, to change because we trust that that is what is needed. And I think that's where intuition comes so strongly into the birthplace and the early, the early weeks, the early months of motherhood. Yeah, uh, training the women after the baby's born, you know, sometimes they're just on dry dock and then they don't know what to do. So in Calls Away, we help them not just bringing the baby out, but then what? And I feel, I like to say this, that women, somebody will ask you, well, why are you doing this? And if a woman can say, I know, and then they say, well, why do you know? And you just say, I know, because I know. And then there's just silence. Because you've tapped into that realm and you know your own truth. And there's a sense of freedom. Instead of, I don't know what to do, I don't know, the doctor says all that. We get down and get strong in the baby's home, connect the third eye point with our intuition, and we come out stronger and mightier than we've ever been our whole lives. And I think that's a beautiful segue into kind of the third principle or the third, one of the third foundations of the Calls Away. And it's really learning to relate to this baby, um, not just as like the cute little thing that it's gonna be for, you know, six months, nine months, a year, but relating to the, the bigger aspect of who this person is, 
is coming into the world to be, and it's really connecting with the soul of the child. And um, I think that it's really easy in pregnancy. I know I've kind of struggled with it a little bit because I have an awareness around all this stuff, and yet you can very easily get swept up into like, it's gonna be so cute and all this cute stuff that goes with this cute baby, and everybody's gonna look at him or her and just wanna kiss him and her, and it's just gonna be this adoring, adorning moment of this small human, but we have to relate to them as something bigger than that because they're going to grow. They're going to grow into adults and we have to start that parenthood and start that relationship if we want them to come into the world with consciousness and continue to grow in consciousness, which is, you know. But we want to hug them and no, smooch them. No, I'm not them saying we don't want to. And dress them cute and everything, but know that all of that is bringing them into becoming a full human being. And who they're going to be as full yeah. human beings yeah. because we have to look at our planet at this day and age and we have to look at the humanity and what this world needs is light beings. It needs people who are coming in to do good, to contribute in wholeness and in, in health. And, and so I think it starts in utero and that parenting and that communication and that connection all starts when the child's in the womb. When the cells divide in the womb, to make a whole human being before they come out, you learn more in the womb than the whole rest of your life. Because every cell division is carrying a memory. And so what a mother eats, what she thinks, how she breathes, what she does, the music she listens to, the relationship with the papa, and on and on and on is being absorbed by this little soul coming in. And in the olden days, it was just, if you remember the paintings in the olden days, they painted little little children like adults. And those expressions, um, what's that one of, um, a child is heard, is seen but not heard? Or don't listen to them, they don't know what they're talking about, they're just little kids. It's all wrong because they know more than we know. And so we honor and we also learn so much from our children. Yeah. Even when they're in the womb, we learn so much. So much. And I think it's just remembering to relate to them as individuals, respecting them from the time they're conceived, um, and cultivating kind of all these titles that we carry through this series, cultivating positivity and joy so that they can learn that in utero, cultivating inner strength so that they're learning how to come into this world with confidence, cultivating intuition so they know already how to be intuitive when they enter the world. Everything that we experience, as, as you said, is imprinting them and impacting them and kind of helping create the blueprint in, in some respect of, who they're going to be. And if we just kind of blow through those nine months and don't treat them as sacred or special, then it's not that the child's going to be doomed, but they may have to do a lot of work to heal or to um, find that truth themselves. Whereas if they can start from birth with this um, kind of Head Start program, you yeah. could call it, a utero Head Start program of coming into the world already knowing some of this stuff, it will just be a gentler life. And I think also for the mama to reassess how she's living in these nine months. Yeah, that's what I'm um, saying. To just chill more, maybe not have deadlines. I, I've had pregnancy classes where they have to get the new bathroom and build the garage and I said, your baby doesn't need the garage. Your baby doesn't need that extra. We need a suite. We need, why? All that baby needs is your arms. Yeah. And they get all stressed out with these deadlines that the baby doesn't even care about. Yeah. <laughs> because we're so used to doing that in the modern world now. Yeah. And then you bring them back to source. All this baby needs is your arms and your eyes and your breasts. <laughs> and some love. And that's love. Yeah. I, um, there's so much we could share about the Kalsa way, but we really hope that through the classes you get to experience what we've shared here now. 
um, just your own intuition, because our words are not um, embodied as your wisdom. Only that can be attained through your practice and through your own experience. So um, carry on with us and enjoy these classes and just see how they make you feel and how your baby responds and um, we will unfold together. And just to be able to, for you to go out into the world just feeling better, your joints feeling better, your hips, your arms, just feeling so present in this physical body from the movement, from the asana practice, from the meditation, how much better you'll sleep at night, be able to get up in the morning and do the practice or do the practice before you go to bed. It will change your life for the better. Satnam. <laughs>